Crystal Isles. Oh boy, do I have a lot to say about this one. Originally made by ARK modders Isold Gaming, Lillian, and Icebez, and then officially brought to the roster for ARK's custom non-story maps in 2020, Crystal Isles is a gigantic map that set a particular standard for custom ARKs going forward. While its new content wasn't shocking anyone, perhaps more due to the nature of how old Ark as a game was getting by this point, what Crystal Isles did for setting a certain level of quality cannot be understated. Hey everyone, my name is Ned, and today I'm going to be talking about all the cool new things that Crystal Isles added as a map, guiding you through its biomes, new take on established DLC content, resources, trophies, creatures, artifacts, and a completely new boss to fight that had never been seen on any other map prior. So without further ado, let's get right into the evolution guide. Now to begin, I'm going to go over all the new biomes that Crystal Isles adds that we haven't really seen in a custom arc before. You may be noticing a pattern here with these more recent guides. Basically the goal is to just go over some like genuinely new takes on arc biomes instead of just listing all of them. So starting out, we've got the White Shoals biome, which is this really bright and saturated beach biome that has tropical crystal wyverns pretty regularly among some, you know, standard beach creatures. It's also got these massive crystals all over the place, which is a common theme. I mean, come on, it's <laughs> crystal isles, plus tons of very bright green trees. And, you know, I never realized just how pretty this place is, despite the saturation. But OK, we, we need to move on. Bloodfalls Hollow is pretty much adjacent to the White Shoals, and it kind of just looks like a regular jungle slash forest area with some pretty drastic height variations, but it's also one of the homes of the Blood Crystal Wyverns, as much as I rarely actually see them there. Next up, the Fire Swamp biome, right next to Emberfall, the really tall volcano, is a really lush and red biome. It's also where Ember Crystal Wyverns spawn, and overall I, I think this is one of the more unique biomes in the map that really caught my eye when I saw it for the first time. And then Ember Falls, pretty cool. It's got this gigantic fire tree at the top and has some very interesting vertical lava streams. Now to move a little more northeast, we've got the Eldritch Isle biome. This place, not gonna like, kind of it scares me. I don't know why exactly, but I'm pretty sure this biome made me realize I have a fear of bubbles. Oh God, some of them move, what the f Okay, maybe it's just the bubbles that shock you? I, I don't know, these things are really goddamn creepy. But yeah, Eldritch Isle is basically a really mysterious snowy island with a thundercloud overhead and these electric bubbles that have resources in them. Namely, one in particular that I found makes this map kinda amazing, but we'll talk about that in the brief resources section. Now, speaking of islands, the Apotheosis biome is composed of a bunch of floating islands, and there are a lot of them. This biome has super dense vegetation and is really damn beautiful. It might be my favorite place on the map, honestly. It was also supposed to have a rock drake trench or area like Valguero was, but Wildcard removed the nests because they felt like it. Now, the last biome on our list here is called the Great Valley. I personally would have just called this like big swamp or something, but you know, that, that works too. It's got a lot of mushrooms and it's kind of like apotheosis with the giant branches and dense vegetation, except it's not floating. You can also get bog stank here, so watch out. Just don't go near the rotting carcasses and you should be okay. But that pretty much sums up the new biomes. Honestly, a lot here, considering I basically ignored any biomes we've seen before on the center, Ragnarok, or Valguero. So now let's talk a little bit about content, namely how Crystal Isles adapts and adds new resources and trophies. So similar to Valguero, CI has engrams from Scorched Earth and Aberration, but this time around it actually kind of builds on getting existing resources and adds a couple new ones. Namely, we've got the Primal Crystal resource, which is gathered just like how Wyvern Milk is gathered by knocking out Wyverns, just this time with the Crystal variants. Then for existing resources, Element can actually be mined here, kind of like Gen 1, but it's not great, uh, nowhere near as much. You can also craft Element at charge nodes that we had way back on Aberration, which is you know, a cool throwback. But while Element isn't too easy to farm or craft, CI is indisputably amazing for organic polymer, as well as tons of honey, which can be mass harvested in the bee cave. Then also black pearls, which can be gathered from you know, some of these like big electric bubbles, Ideally, you want to use an angler. And then from the fire swamp, you can get loads of charcoal from these trees. And so those are just a couple of resources that Crystal Isles happens to do really, really well, and ones which you can get a ton of on this map. 
Next, we've got the trophies, and CI adds three at least exclusive ones at the time I'm making this video. One of them is a brand new artifact that hasn't been used on other maps, the artifact of the Lost. Then we've got the Crystal Talons, which are an apex drop gathered from the corpses of Crystal Wyverns. And lastly, the Alpha Crystal Talons, which are incredibly difficult to get because of just how rare Alpha Crystal Wyverns are in the first place. Just to illustrate how rare they are, here were my reactions after my tribe and I found them the first couple times. Yo! Let's go! It didn't sound like Oh, what is that? Yo? Yo! Yo! Did you find one? Dude, I found one! I found another! Let's go! But speaking of crystal wyvern talons, let's talk about the wyverns and all the other new creatures that CI adds. To start, crystal wyverns themselves come in three types, with a few variants for each type. First, we've got the tropical crystal wyverns, which shoot super hot steaming water, applying a similar debuff that the fire wyvern does, and can touch water to get a temporary speed boost. Then there are the blood crystal wyverns, which shoot a stream of blood that actually steals the health of other creatures while healing itself, basically like a blood suck ability. And lastly, there are the ember crystal wyvern types, which are basically like fire wyverns, except the damage of their breath increases as it's used repeatedly, giving it the ability to be more intense than fire wyverns' regular fire breath. Now, either any of these variants are the neutral, regular crystal wyverns that spawn in their respective regions and can actually be tamed by hand passively, or they come in the form of the airs, which exist in the desert wyvern hive, CI's take on the wyvern trenches from previous maps. See, these ones will attack on sight because they're guarding their precious, precious eggs. And then lastly, you'll find the very rare alpha crystal wyvern, which only comes in the blood variant. So ideally, you want to fight it with a blood crystal wyvern so its breath can't hurt you. But yeah, that's enough about wyverns. What else is there? Well, CI has what's called a Tropiagnathus, which is kind of like a Tapiara, but on steroids. You can attach a goddamn jet engine to it and make it go real fast, especially if it's behind another flyer where it gets a crazy boost. They're kind of frustrating to tame, but Nooblitz made a really good guide on it here, so I recommend checking it out. I'll leave the link in the description. But beyond that, the last creature CI adds, besides boss stuff, is called the Giant Worker Bee, and it's <laughs> terrifying. Oh my god, it's so huge! Oh! God, why are they so big? That is so scary! Oh my god, leave me alone! Oh! God, why are there so many? Oh my god! Oh! Oh! Please! Okay, maybe they're not that scary and I'm just a big baby, but these things guard their precious beehive, the same place where you can get loads of organic polymer, and did I mention honey too? The giant worker bees can't be tamed, and they can also be killed really easily. But yeah, that about does it for new creatures that CI adds. Oh yeah, and just so I don't get yelled at in the comments, yes, there are griffins. A lot of griffins in this nest area that has empty nests why are there gems in them i, I don't understand i don't understand moving on let's talk about my favorite section the caves and artifacts and boy does see i do a pretty terrible job with these remember when i said valguero seemed to set a precedent of just leaving artifacts out in the middle of nowhere well crystal isles took that and to say it ran with it is a <laughs> understatement like valguero ci requires that you collect entirely different artifacts for each difficulty of the boss so I'm going to run through these real fast in order. Gamma's up first. The artifact of the brute is just out in the open here. This is going to be a common theme, I assure you. Then we got the artifact of the devious. The artifact of the immune is in a log here. Very creative. <laughs> the massive is in a lake here. And the skylord is just under a waterfall right out in the open. Then for beta, the clever is in a pretty basic cave. The cords are on screen here for the entrance. The cunning is found just here in the ocean. The Depths is a little tougher. Uh, you can get to it by heading to the Bee Cave here at these cords, then going into this water section below it and swimming to these cords where the actual artifact is found. The Devourer is just out in the open here. The Hunter is as well. <laughs> um, and the Strong is in this very, very large spooky cave in the snowy area that has multiple entrances. It's a little confusing, but the actual cords of the artifact are here where it rests up on this ledge. Now, finally for Alpha, we've got the Crag out in the open here. The Destroyer is found in this random lake. The Gatekeeper is also in the middle of nowhere. The Lost is in this underwater cave with the cords to the entrance being here. Then you swim through it, stick to the left, and you'll find it pretty fast. Right here. 
Then we've got the pack, which is in another pretty basic cave. Of course, the entrance are here. The shadows is out in the open. And lastly, the stalker is in this cool little ocean cave right here. So as usual, all these artifacts lead up to one thing in particular, that being the requirement for opening a portal to the boss arena. And oh, does Crystal Isles add something fantastic. So unlike the center Ragnarok or Valguero, Crystal Isles adds a completely new boss type called the Crystal Wyvern Queen. Now she's pretty hard, but if you know how to defeat her, it's actually pretty doable. So I'm gonna tell you how to do just that. First of all, this is her arena. We have this podium here where you first spawn in when you teleport. Then there are three giant nests where she will periodically move between and these interesting spots here and here. Now, why are these spots interesting? Well, first I need to explain what the queen does exactly. So basically the dynamic of this boss fight is that the queen will move between being stationary on a nest to flying. When you deal enough damage to her and she reaches a specific health threshold, she'll take off and attack from the air for a while until she eventually lands. This is either from reaching another damage threshold or just being in the air for a certain amount of time. I believe it's the former, but it was kind of hard to tell when I was doing it recently. Now the trick here is to bring an army of fairies or rexes. Uh, you can also use stuff from other maps like Deinonychus, Shadowmans, or Velanosaurs, but myself and my allies didn't have those since we had to beat this map recently with just the dinos you find on Crystal Isles, giving me the particularly useful experience to make this guide for Crystal Isles per se, so like on its own. But with your army of preferably good fairies with good saddles and that are loaded up with veggie cakes, combined with a Yudi, you can attack the queen head on carefully till she takes off, then head over to the left here in the corner and hug it while she swoops down to attack. She'll get kind of stuck and you can destroy her health pretty quick. Also keep in mind you're gonna wanna bring Medbrews because she can shoot these balls of death that will do a lot of damage to you even when you're on the mount. It'll hurt your player as well. Now throughout all this, the queen lays these terrible little eggs that very quickly hatch and that the crystal wyvern heirs come out of and grow up from. And I mean fast, mind you. Then they'll start killing you, particularly if you have a Yudi. Be real careful. I mean, it's pretty much impossible to keep it alive unless you have crazy good stats on it or a really good saddle, because unlike fairies, Yudis can't eat veggie cakes. And our friend Buzzleg here got absolutely swarmed by these things. But yeah, once you finally kill the Crystal Wyvern Queen, the reward is a measly 40 element for Gamma, 110 for Beta, and 220 for Alpha, along with, of course, loads of tech grams. She also rewards a new kind of flag and trophy, but you can't transfer these to my knowledge, so thanks, Wildcard. <laughs> but with that, I've pretty much summed up this map. We went over biomes, items, creatures, artifacts, and bosses. And if this is a map you're playing on or plan to play, I hope you've at least learned something from this guy that can help you. I try and really you know, sum up my knowledge and also just stuff from the wiki in these videos to help you get a lot of information without having to go through a bunch of different guides. So let me know if I'm doing a good job there. If you liked this video and are excited to see more, go ahead and caress that like button and subscribe to my channel for more content. And stay tuned for the Lost Island and Fjorder evolution guides coming very, very soon. Leave a comment as well and let me know which evolution guides have been your favorite so far. But as always, thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Good luck, survivors.